Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome inside the O.B. O'Brien Court here from LaSalle College High School. My name is Danny Roby, your play-by-play -play commentator for tonight. Alongside me here is my friend Oliver Gomez. He'll be your color commentator tonight. And of course, we have our guy, Brady Joyce, running the camera as always. So we have a great matchup here on tap for you guys today. It's the four and five Devon Prep Tide versus the five and six LaSalle Explorers. Both teams are winless so far in league play, so it's absolutely imminent that either school here gets on track with a W. Oliver, before we get in to our National Anthem player intros, what are some thoughts here leading into this game? Yeah, thank you very much, Danny. Uh, I'll start on the LaSalle side of things today. Um, personally, I do have high expectations for them. Uh, they couldn't quite get the upside against the prep, but they played a very impressive game and a big comeback, losing big at halftime. They made it a one-point game, couldn't quite themselves into the lead, and couldn't quite get the win but it's still impressive nonetheless and a good momentum boost for them leading up to the game today. A couple big pieces of that game were Nick Parisi. He had 28 points, 18 of which came in the fourth quarter. He was the main reason for that big comeback in the fourth, but again, they couldn't quite get it done at the end. Um, Hayes Altamare, he had a big bounce back game after the tough game he had against Bonner two games ago. Uh, he was very good from three in the start of the game. He cooled off towards the end of the game, but he did end up fouling out with four minutes to go. Um, a big piece for LaSalle today overall, I think, is going to be consistency. They had a big run in the beginning of the game. They had a big run at the end of the game. I think if they can keep it consistent, constantly control the game, they're going to be able to get a win tonight. For the Devon uh, prep side of things, they are uh, coming off a 65-52 loss against a uh, Roman Catholic team who do have 11 straight wins to start the year. Calvin Smith, uh, he was the highest point scorer with 14 points. He went 4 for 10 from 3, and those were the only shots he took apart from the two free throws he made. Uh, another big piece, Zaire Conlin, 12 points. He went one from six from three, 36% for the field, uh, one for two from three. So if he's a guy that they're going to want to shoot a lot, it would be nice for them to see him get back on track, see that uh, free throw percentage and uh, field goal percentage uh, take a turn. Yeah, absolutely. Now, last year, Devin Prep and LaSalle had almost mirror match seasons. The tie finished 3-10 and in PCL play. LaSalle just one game off at 2-11. and So very important that these teams begin their bounce back year now with a statement win. Uh, of course, LaSalle, like you said, had a great showing last game against St. Joe's Prep. They lost by three points. It was a tremendous game. And LaSalle definitely is looking to use that positive momentum here going into this matchup against Devin Prep. Now, listen, these first three games of the year are so important, and they play them all at home, right? So going on from this, then LaSalle will play a two-game away stretch of their own, uh, a game against Archbishop Carroll on Friday and Archbishop Wood on Tuesday. So obviously important they get this home W here, and we will take it in with the National Anthem.
So as always, a great job right there from the LaSalle College High School Band with that playing of the national anthem. And we are just about ready to get into things here from the gymnasium with player intros for, first of all, the Devon Prep Tide. Mason Tier, the junior here, starting in the backcourt for the Tide. Calvin Smith there. As well as Shane Doyle, number five. Starting in the front court here, we have Reese Kraft, the junior. He's made a statement so far this year, done a great job of that. And number 25, rounding out the bunch, we have Zane Conlon. Now this is an all junior starting five here for the tie to Devon Prep, and you can see they take the court in those dark gray Jumpman uniforms. For LaSalle on the flip side, they will be playing in the Under Armour Whites. Liam Hawley will start it off in the backcourt. The point guard has had a great year. A high IQ player, a lot of dimes and dishes on the field, and there we have Nick Parisi, number four. He's been the sharpshooter and kind of the guy that they've ran this offense through. He's a great player in the backcourt. That was a great basketball mind. And here we have Will Bear. He's had starts in the last three games due to some injuries on the floor previously. He's done a great job in what he's been given. And here we have Hayes Altamar, also another showstopper last game against Prep. Hit a lot of big threes, a lot of clutch shots. Did a great job for the Explorers. And then what rounds out the bunch is number five, Joey Shields. He's the front court presence, the guy who you always want to go down low to. He's a great player. So right now getting ready to tip off here. You know, Devon Prep is always a great game. You know, whenever you're, you're, you're broadcasting or commentating for them or even watching um, online because, you know, with their head coach, Jason Fisher, they're known to play a brand of basketball that's often thought of as positionless, right? These guys are players that will move all up and down the court, will make a lot of flashy plays, a lot of cuts. They run a high tempo offense right there. And look at that, put up there from number 25. Zane Collin does not fall though. LaSalle will get the rebound. Hawley finds Parisi. LaSalle working the ball around the perimeter like they do so well. That ball's a toss up though, picked up by Devin Prep. That's in the hands of Calvin Smith. Calvin Smith's driving. Look at the drop off dime right there, back to Smith. And that'll be a foul, how about that? Charge taken, Hayes Altamare. Did a great job right there, it's a selfless play. Does it so well, it does it so often. And we are scoreless 30 seconds into this matchup. Holly will take this ball up once more. Holly back to Parisi, he thinks about the jumper. He drives in, he's on triple coverage, gets beyond those defenders and count that layup. LaSalle's on the board, two nothing. Drop off pass there down low. Reese Kraft, Reese Kraft goes up with it. And he'll answer right there. In close range, Reese Kraft, a floater of his own. Sal swinging the ball around. He's out to Mari, he's tightly guarded. That could be in the game plan for the tie today. See if they can swarm him in the triple team. And they poke that ball free. But it looks like it'll stay LaSalle right there. So that could definitely be something to game plan for Oliver as we saw how explosive a player like Hayes Altamari was last game against the prep. You know, could Devin answer with, with their guarding of him? Yes, he made a lot of threes early. So to see them triple guard him, it's very big. Trying to get him out of the game early. Try to limit his point total. Yeah, and right there, that was a nice job of number four Calvin Smith going up with it. But that would be LaSalle ball here. He had missed the layup, the ball was poked out. But the ref says last touch by Devin Prep and LaSalle will have the ball again here. Hawley there is picked up and guarded by Reese Kraft. How about that for a mismatch, but he doesn't care. Hawley plays with a lot of heart. He'll go up on him right there. Does not get the layup to fall, but that's Will Bear with the rebound. And he'll draw the foul. Will Bear gets sent to the line here off a great offensive rebound and put back attempt.
you know, in a game against St. Joseph's Prep where well, Salas had, had now a few days to go back and review some of the tape uh, to, to think about the decisions they made. I think one of the definitely, uh, one of the talking points for this team has been their foul troubles against St. Joseph's Prep. And I think that it's just so important that they can stay disciplined in a game like this. Yeah, a guy we were mentioning earlier, Hayes Atamari, he fouled out of that game. So he wasn't able to contribute into the comeback at the end of that game. So if he can stay in, see if that changes the way that they finish these games. Number five right there. He'll cash in. That's Shane Doyle, the junior, from the corner. Tightly contested there. Doesn't matter. Hand in the face. He'll make it regardless. The tied lead, 5-3. Volley dribble drive. And they're gonna call on a double dribble. Or no, the illegal screen, that's on uh, Nick Parisi. He did not have the feet set. So Parisi decided to come in right there. Was not fully set. Locked in his position, the refs argued. And that'll be tied ball. Another tray right there. Number four, Calvin Smith has a three of his own to pair with Doyle's. Devin Prep did not shoot very well from three against Roman, so if they can keep this going, that'll be huge to see if they can turn around, put up big point totals today. Yeah, exactly, Oliver. And the three ball is a big aspect of the Tides game. Like we said earlier before this one, they're known to play a positionless brand of basketball, which means they can have a lot of shots from all over the field. Doesn't matter where it is. They're always trying to get something off right there. And that was a great layup there. LaSalle is down by three, eight, five, the Tide lead. But you know, we can see right now, they have a lot of movement everywhere. There's picks all over the court. So when LaSalle decides to mark them in a man-on-man -man coverage, it's always important to stay locked for the defender. Yeah, you can see Liam Hawley get caught up in the defense there as he comes in and gets a layup. But with the constant movement, it causes confusion on the defense. And everyone has to figure out just right in the nick of time where they need to be, and it can be difficult. Well, how about that right there? That's number five, Shane Doyle driving in. He's fouled hard on that play. Could not get the shot off, so he'll send him two to the line. So both teams here, some fouls to match. Two fouls apiece. Just a little bit over halfway to go here in this first quarter. That'll be Shane Doyle again cashing in. He's gotten his name in the books early with some points here. Holly once again guarded by Dries Kraft. Passes out, Hayes out to Mario from the corner, bang. Continues to be lightning from three in the first quarter. He made a couple against Prep in the first few minutes of that game. Yeah, absolutely, right there. Got a little bit tripped up on that play, but it'll be Conlon driving in. Conlon gets the ball poked free. Colin top of the key, but he'll pass out to Calvin. That's another foul there on Nick Parisi. So that's his second there in this first quarter. And you know, that really changes your mentality. When you start off the game early like that, you already got two fouls. It's when, you know, it's time to, to take your foot off the gas a little bit and uh, and reflect. Uh, so get him out. He'll, he'll, they'll be taking him out here early in this first quarter. Uh, definitely always hate to see that, uh, just a little procedural fouls, but it'll be Luke Hudak who takes him out. He also had some electrifying threes as well last game. Three for three to start us off for Devin Prep from three. Yeah, and Conlon right there did a great job of getting to the spot and knocking that, down one, knocking that one down quick with Shields right on him. Yeah, and Shields had nowhere to go right, right there. That ball is poked free. Ultimately, last touch by the Tide. So LaSalle will remain in possession. Dudok here. He'll reset it. Holly will swing to Hudak. Back to Shields. Hudak right there from the corner. Just could not fall. 
tight defense from Devin to start us off, pressuring LaSalle, making them to make those passes, trying to get them to make a mistake and get a steal. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think the, one of the elements of the Tides game plan was also checking out for how LaSalle shot the ball against a team like St. Joe's Prep. I mean, we know that a lot of those threes for LaSalle were quick. You know, it was kind of like a catch and shoot. Maybe one dribble off the dribble, you'd shoot it right there. So. I think that was a key element there of Devin Prep's game plan is see if you can lock down on these guys. The second they get the ball, limit the shot opportunities. Right there, that shot from Shane Doyle will not fall. Hawley here, how about that? The no-look hesitation pass. Shields met with a lot of pressure, passes out to Altamare. Hawley right there from deep. How about that? Number one, the senior, one of three seniors for the LaSalle team. He's a leader on and off the court. Drains that triple. And LaSalle is all tied up here. That's Conlon driving in. Conlon will miss on that one. And that'll go. Reese Kraft with the putback attempt, the offensive rebound, and the points to pair. Now Hawley again picked up by Kraft. Oh, right there, a little misread. Ty will get the ball in transition, and how about that? Get to the rack, young fella. Shane Doyle, the junior, with a great basket. How about that move in the paint right there, Oliver? Yeah, very nice move, but in the beginning of the game, I was thinking if Devin Prep can take advantage of the LaSalle mistakes, like on that steal and score, Hayes Altamari running a little too early. The pass was behind him, and it was easily picked up. If they take advantage of those mistakes throughout the game, they're going to be able to run away with it today. Yeah, that was an originally a good move there by Conlon, but the shot from Thier is missed. Sal right now trail by four points. Hawley there contemplates the shot, but he'll drive past Kraft. You know, you talk about a mismatch right there, but how about the speed from Hawley? That makes up for it. What a crafty player right there. He creates his own space, gets to the basket right there. You didn't see the driving lane, but he saw it. Took it all the way to the cup. Yeah, Holly, especially after making his first three, definitely has that as an option. He uses the fake there. Got him to bite. That's Doyle, tightly guarded by Hudak. Holly will get a hand in the face, but that does not mean anything. Mason Thier getting on the board again with a deep trifecta. Upping the Tides lead to 20 right now. 20 to 15, that is a five point lead with under a minute to go here in this first quarter. Hawley debated the shot. Shields top of the key. He's looking to find Hawley again. Looking to drive past, find Shields again. Shields pulling up. How about that? The big fella, Joey Shields, drains the triple. 18 to 20 is your score with about half a minute to go in this first quarter. We've got a lot of threes so far in this one. An entertaining first quarter. Passes out. That's Kraft from deep. Kraft will not connect on the three-pointer. LaSalle trails by two. Again, no shot clock here in PIAA play. Obviously, that was the Devon Prep's benefit when they made the jump a few years ago from the Interact to the PCL, is having that no shot clock. So LaSalle can also use that to their advantage. They can take their time on a play like this. Luke Hudak from the corner. He will cash in, and LaSalle leads 21-20. The Tide try and get a quick shot off. Let's see what they can do. That's Doyle. He'll get it off. Will not fall. So LaSalle leads 21-20 here after one. How about what William Hawley right there, making it happen, dribbling all throughout the lane, finding that pass in the corner wide open for Luke Hudak for the three, and everything falling for it so far. I mean, the pace of play right now reminds me of an NCAA Division I Power 5 matchup right here. You got 41 points just in the first quarter alone. I mean, you, you really feel like you're, these teams are going, you know, kind of you know, back and forth and back and forth doing a great job of shooting the basketball. Yeah, you mentioned how entertaining this game is right now. If it continues to be like that, it's going to be a great game to watch. Absolutely. Absolutely. Throughout the years, calling a lot of Devon Prep first LaSalle basketball games, they're always entertaining. I remember my sophomore year, LaSalle took a trip to Devon. Uh, it was a packed gym on a Friday night. Uh, the student section was unbelievable. That, they do a great job with the student section at that school. Um, all the kids were rowdy. It was a great atmosphere. And I remember LaSalle ended up squeaking by in a, a close contest. Um, but I mean, it was just an unforgettable atmosphere and uh, always a pleasure to broadcast over there. The gym gets packed in, um, you know, just like this gym was uh, against St. Joe's Prep on that Friday night uh, just a few days ago. So always a blessing to do these PCL games and 
and in front of great crowds and great atmospheres. Now, I will say the crowd tonight is a little bit lighter at LaSalle. Uh, classes will resume tomorrow from a long and you know well-earned winter break, I think, for the students. So with that, we'll take you back into action here from the second quarter. Again, LaSalle will remain in possession with the ball. Hawley driving in. He's guarded there by Mike Pergolis. Hawley there tripped up though. Pergolis will dive on it, but he has last touch, could not get the steal. He's angry about that one, but LaSalle will remain in control here in possession of the ball. Again, Liam Hawley being the playmaker. He loses the handle on the ball, but he dives. He's aggressive, and he gets it to go off the Devon Prep defender. Spit out, and now they have a chance in their offensive half. So Shields here, the inbound man for the Explorers. Passes out, Grayson McHugh. That ball will stay LaSalle as well. So it's great to see McHugh finally back in for the Explorers here. Did not play against the Prep. He was also out for Monsignor Bonner, a 30-point loss for LaSalle. He's the big man, 6'8". He had a great football season for the Explorers. It's so good to see him on the court again. A yeah, and stoppage with, and play right there. With Nick Parisi in foul trouble early, probably going to see a lot more of him as they need some other guys to step up. And now that he can come off an injury, see if he can still uh, produce as much as he had been. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a foul right there on Pergolis again. He'll guard Hawley, but he racked up another one for Devin Prep. That's their first team foul this quarter here. That's also Preston Washington. He had a couple big shots that last game for LaSalle. And Shields right there, just miscommunication with Liam Hawley. Passes that one away. We're still at 21-20 here in this game. Passes down low, back out, Conlin. Good dribble Conlin. drive. He'll find him down low again, but Grayson McHugh with the rejection on Ben Costello. But LaSalle gives the ball back up. Zane Conlon right there, converts. Unfortunate there, it's a great play uh, for that block for McHugh. Unfortunate to give it back up, get LaSalle those points anyway. Frankly, giving them that basket, but right there, Luke Hudak with an answer of his own right there. The trifecta, so hard to miss from that range. That good of a player, he's made so many of those shots all year long and we look to have it continue here. LaSalle leads 24-22. Down though that ball is picked away by Preston Washington. That's out of bounds, however. Devin Prep will remain in possession. Shields will be taken out for the Explorers. Hayes Altamare comes in. Passed out to Costello. Costello to the top of the key. Back out. Oh my goodness, and how about that? Calvin Smith with the triple. He fell back as he made it. Guess he was searching for a foul call. Couldn't find one, but a great basket there from Smith. We saw Joey O'Brien check in for Liam Hawley just as that play got running, and uh, O'Brien a huge part of that game as well. Not the point total, he only did have four points, but a lot of rebounds, a lot of aggressive plays, winning that ball, drawing fouls, maybe a little too aggressive. He did give up a couple fouls, but nonetheless, he was a huge part of that game against the prep. Yeah, absolutely, and really, you know, Joey O'Brien is the type of guy that you want to have on your team in the PCL. He's someone who can get it done on both ends of the floor. He's a gritty player. He'll have the hardworking plays. Like we saw him diving on the floor for a couple loose balls, uh, throwing down some dunks. Um, he's just a guy you need on your team, real scrappy player. Um, does a great job of playing the game, and always good to see him checking in here for LaSalle. Had a great football season. An all-Catholic player, a uh, great individual, uh, and a leader, uh, you know, on and off the field and on and off the court. So Preston Washington will take this ball up right here. LaSalle is down one point, 24-25. He'll find McHugh down low. And they get him on the foul. Tied ball. So LaSalle meeting Devin Prep here. And a little full court set. And really right there, O'Brien doing exactly what LaSalle desires in this set is put pressure on the player with the ball. See if you can come up with a steal or, or, or you know, inter intercepted pass. 
24, Ben Costello. Costello passes out. Oh, and how about that move right there? Zane Conlon getting up. What a great layup. Using that length to his advantage there. That's a sizable play. And Hayes Altamari will blow by him. O'Brien, quick pass out to Preston. Preston Washington debates the shot. Altamare will drive in. Can't find anything, but pass it off to McHugh. How about that? The physicality from McHugh. Knocks down Costello. No whistles on the play and no baskets either. Will Sal down three in this contest. Some of the Sal parents there arguing for a travel on that play, but now they're gonna get it. They'll get it. Absolutely, they will get it. Sal a little more patient at the start of this game than they were against the prep. Everything was going up for three throughout that game. They've been a little more patient, faking more, getting down in the paint and, get, and chipping away uh, with two instead of just going for the three on most of their possessions. Yeah, and that pass right there. All the what Oh my effort. goodness, what a steal there from Conlon. He's able to keep that ball in. Altamari uh, gets yeah. another charge on him there. A selfless play there from Altamari. If it had been called the other way, it would have been an and one there with the block, but how about that? Getting in there at the right time, getting your feet set, feet planted, your whole body still, and that's something that we've seen a lot. Almost every game, LaSalle has taken a charge. That's a great team stat right there. Redock there driving in, Hawley. That's Mason Thier picking up the foul. The second of the night. Devin Prep by themselves with three team fouls. Redock. Triple threat. That pass got deflected. It'll remain the Sal ball. Absolutely, it'll remain the Sal ball here. This will be Nick Parisi checking back into the game for the Explorers. He'll take out Luke Rudock. Parisi started the game, got into some foul trouble early. He had two. Back into the game now, always great to see. He's a spot-up shooter, can kind of do whatever you need. Drive in, pass out, and get rebounds whenever you need him. Yeah, for a guy that showed up big late against the prep, not what you want to see two fouls in the first. See if he can be a little more careful, try to go the whole second quarter here into the second half without a foul. Yeah, he will turn that ball over right there. We can see the dribble there deflected off his leg, rolled out of bounds. Obviously no kickball violation if that's on offense, so that'll be Devin Prep basketball here with 4.53 left in the quarter. He'll be subbed out swiftly here. Hudak gets back in. LaSalle head coach Ryan Itzel may have saw a matchup there that he liked with Hudak. Looks like Parise is going to check him into the game fairly quickly once again. Hasn't gone all the way back to the bench. Kraft driving in on McHugh. McHugh does a great job of using his body. Blocks off the driving lane. Kraft top of the key. Kraft there. A lot of contact. No whistle. Kraft. That ball is off his leg. The Sal basketball. But if you really want a, a, a snapshot as to how Devin Prep runs that offense, you can basically see it right there if you just watch Reese Craft and Reese Craft only. The way that he, he moves all across the court is not normal for a regular center in the PCL. So Devin Prep uses their players in so many different and unique ways that make them such an interesting team to watch. Passes down right there, Pergolis. Back to him, he'll swing Good it all pass. the way out to Kraft. Missing on the three, he had too much on that one, and Parisi will end up with the ball. Back into the game here for LaSalle. So Parisi there, losing that one again, but looks like Conlon touched that one, but he was already out of bounds. So LaSalle down three right here, it's a tight game. A little bit under four minutes remaining here in the second. Devin Preppen all over Nick Parisi, knocking the ball loose after he had well he had kicked that ball out of bounds earlier, getting him to lose it, lose the handle again. Lasalle kept the ball that time. Altamari right there from deep. He may as well count it again. Number 21. How about that from far? All tied up here. 
LaSalle needed a three, and Hayes Altamare picked up the phone. He answered the call and delivered. Oh, and right there, Parisi. That layup can't fall. It was a hard-nosed basket opportunity. Kraft there passing it off. That's number four. Calvin Smith. McHugh cash in again. McHugh took the chance, tried to intercept that ball in the air, but left, a, left an open three opportunity. Yeah, and Calvin Smith has cashed in on a lot of big threes so far this game. He has a hot hand from beyond the perimeter. But can LaSalle answer? Yes, they can. Nick Parisi with authority going up there, showcasing those fundamental baskets. Does a great job of putting that ball in the bucket. And he'll pick up another foul right there. Got the body involved a little bit too early. That'll be his third personal foul. Only LaSalle second, he'll be subbed out again. As well as McHugh. So that'll be Shields and Bear checking in for the Explorers. Under three minutes to go here in this quarter. LaSalle trails by a point. Number five, Doyle passes back out. Costello has the ball. Costello at the elbow. Passes back out. Calvin Smith. Calvin Smith, tightly guarded by Joey Shields. Hayes out to Mare on Conlon. Conlon trying to drive in. Couple hesitations. He'll get to the basket, but no good. Unfortunate there from Conlon. He made Altamare miss there. Couldn't quite get it to fall. Oh, Hawley right there. What a pass. Shields could not connect on the three ball. It looks like that'll remain Explorer basketball here. Just over two minutes in this quarter. Altamare here, the inbound man for LaSalle. Oh my goodness, he had Hudak wide open down low. He wasn't picked up yet by Doyle. That ball is poked free again and it'll stay LaSalle. But oh my goodness, you had Hudak with a, a, a full head of steam going straight towards the basket, running a little motion play. He wasn't picked up yet. That could be a free basket for LaSalle. Only down one point right here. They've kept this game close all night long. Done a great job of taking the points that were available. Holly right now driving past Doyle, passes down low. McHugh, what a great play. High IQ from Grayson McHugh. Does a great job of, of stopping down low, waiting for the guys to jump and go up there, safe and sound, no contact. Conlon there fakes the three. He'll drive in on Altamari. He'll pass back out. It's Ben Costello. Cannot convert on the three. Joey Shields picks up the rebound. Now LaSalle playing up tempo here. Holly looking to drive in. Hawley passes down low again, McHugh at the baseline, and Joey Shields right there. The buckets call it off, it's a foul on the floor. Unfortunate there for LaSalle. A great move to the basket by Joey Shields. And they're gonna, call the, they're gonna call the foul on Doyle. But I mean, how about that right there from LaSalle? Talk about that ball movement, Oliver. Yeah, a great pass from uh, McHugh there to get the Shields close quarters there to get it to him for the opportunity to get the lay. Didn't quite turn out. They did win the foul though. Yeah, and Shields right there will end up getting on the board as intended. Shields, that's a really tough basket. And he was able to have it fall. He was tightly guarded right there. And that'll take us into timeout here. Not too much time remaining in this one. And really, it feels like LaSalle has kept their foot on the accelerator throughout this one, Oliver. Yeah, looks like uh, O'Brien checked into the game right after the foul was called there. Yeah, absolutely. So LaSalle doing a great job here. Guarding the tie very tightly and then using a lot of those transition points to their advantage. Obviously so pivotal that LaSalle breaks into the win column here in the PCL. Our camera's focused on first year head coach Ryan Ansel for the Explorers. He's done a great job so far this year with everything with the LaSalle College High School basketball program. Almost rebranding the team, bringing in a new culture, a new mantra, a new sense of togetherness here for these explorers. And so far this year, we've watched a lot of high tempo basketball, a lot of electrifying plays. And it feels like game after game, this team just begins to 
to turn into something more of a unit. I talked to Joey Shields after the loss to St. Joe's Prep, 78-75, and you know, he said that we're letting people know the style and standard of LaSalle basketball at its best. And that's, that's the way to put it right there. LaSalle is beginning to let people know in the PCL and wherever else the style and standard of their basketball program. It's obviously going to be a process, but it's something that is gradual, it'll take time, and it has an ultimate goal. And that ultimate goal is to get to the Palestra and hoist that hubcap, whenever that may be. Right, you said it takes time, but we've seen snippets of it early in the game and then late in the game against Prep. If they can work it throughout the middle, good lay by McHugh there, but if they can keep it going throughout the middle of games, they're gonna be really tough to beat. Yeah, absolutely right there, and, and Grayson McHugh gets that ball off. A lot of great ball movement. LaSalle extends this lead, they're at 35-32. But how about that, the triple from Calvin Smith. You gotta arm up on him. He's had a lot of big threes all game. Big shots when the tide needs him most. He's the guy they call on right from that corner, but Hawley going in for the lay, a little bit too strong right there off the finger roll. And that's Conlon taking the ball up here for the Tide. He'll pass off Doyle, another three. Oh my goodness, Calvin Smith, the guy can't miss. Another trifecta, and the Tide lead by three here with just under 20 seconds remaining in the second. So I'm not gonna give Devin another chance to get some points at the end of the half. Yeah, gonna run this clock down, see who they can find open. Right there, LaSalle couldn't put it up and Altamare couldn't finish on the three as well. Not even sure if he got that one off, so definitely a tough last two possessions there for the Explorers. They were hot, and then they were met with a couple of threes there from Calvin Smith. That'll take us to half. Oliver, some of your thoughts here from uh, two quarters underway. Very entertaining first half. I don't think I've ever seen a better th three, three ball percentage in a game at all. Like, unbelievable, everything going down for both, for both sides. Um, high scoring game in the first half. Didn't see this big uh, point totals on, on either side for that game on Friday against the prep. Um, but very excited to see the second half here. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely a very, very entertaining game throughout too. And, and uh, we will take you to commercial here for halftime. We'll be back. Don't go anywhere with a lot of action here in the second half between these two great PCL squads. Ford is Mayfair's neighborhood Ford store. Nobody knows your neighborhood like Dunphy Ford. Nearly 40 years. Right here on Frankfurt Avenue. Generation after generation, our neighbors continue to be our customers. We have access to the cars and trucks you want with financing you need. Dunphy Ford is Northeast Philly's first choice for America's number one brand. 7700 Frankfurt Avenue in Mayfair. Online at www.dumpyford.com. Come experience the Dunphy difference. You'll be glad you did. One of the most important relationships a business can have is with its commercial banker.
This is Bob Long, and when I'm not broadcasting sports, I'm servicing my clients and building relationships with prospective clients. Whether now is the time to grow through capital investment, to drive operational efficiencies, or to leave a legacy through succession planning, I can be a resource to guide you through the process. Bob Long, a commercial banker in the greater Philadelphia area, where my goal is to help your business grow. What does your character look like? Does it bounce back after each setback? Does it stand out by standing up? Does it make good on good intentions? Character is invisible until it's not. Only through action will the world know what it's made of, what you're made of. Find out how you can strengthen the character of your community alongside empowered veterans and families of the fallen at travismanion.org. I chose CCM because I have found that this company, um, on the level of scaling that we have here, the volume that we are doing, to truly have every department head and employee fully engaged in the mission of the company to make it an originator-focused, um, production-first uh, company. I have not found that anywhere I've worked, and I've worked one of the largest banks in the world, down to the smallest tiny community bank and correspondent lender, no one has been able to consistently deliver that message. I would say that LaSalle is dynamic. Prepared. Diverse. Brotherhood. Family. Ford is Mayfair's neighborhood Ford store. Nobody knows your neighborhood like Dunphy Ford. Nearly 40 years. Right here on Frankfurt Avenue. Generation after generation, our neighbors continue to be our customers. We have access to the cars and trucks you want with financing you need. Dunphy Ford is Northeast Philly's first choice for America's number one brand. 7700 Frankfurt Avenue in Mayfair. Online at www.dumpyford.com. Come experience the Dunphy difference. You'll be glad you did. My name is Patrick Donahue, a franchise consultant with Franchise, the premier network of franchise consultants in America. Franchise is a company that helps people find a franchise business that's the perfect fit for them. We work with the people who want to own a business but don't really know how to find one that's both a top-notch opportunity and a great match. We specialize in franchise opportunities with the following three characteristics. Low investment, high margin, and rapid break-evens. The best thing about our service is that it's free to the public. We're paid by franchise companies for this service. The process is simple. First we do an introduction, then the candidate provides me with information. We have a consultation based on that information, and we build what's called the model. 
Once we have that model, we will share that with three great opportunities that match your criteria. I will follow up with you through the entire process. Obviously, the best opportunities fit the criteria mentioned above. And the right way to find those opportunities is to spend some time with the people who work with the very best franchise companies looking to expand in your local area. I'm humbled by your consideration and I look forward to speaking with you soon. Alrighty, and we will take you back into the O.B. O'Brien Gymnasium here from LaSalle College High School. The score, LaSalle here down three, 38-35 in a tight contest. Back and forth and back and forth in this one. A lot of threes. Devin Prep answered a lot of the points that LaSalle had in the interior and in the exterior. Oliver Gomez, what are some of your thoughts so far? Yeah, both teams had their fair share of time in front. Um, the three ball being a huge part of this game right now. Everything going down for both sides. Devin Prep hit a couple at the end of the, ha uh, the half to get that three-point lead. LaSalle couldn't answer at the end. But if they can continue, both teams continue to um, be accurate from beyond the arc, I think it will be a very entertaining, very high-scoring second half as it gets a little more intense on the end of the stretch. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely going to be a, a great second half of play uh, we have on tap for you guys. Uh, both these teams in search of their first PCL win, so absolutely important they get that. Devin Prep, a little reminder, they're 4-5 and five on the year. They have losses against Lincoln Park, Ursuline, West Philly, Cristo Ray, and most recently Roman Catholic, a 13-point L to the Kaolites. But they have wins against North Catholic over in uh, Central Pennsylvania, Constitution, Overbrook, and Dobbins. Um, so definitely some esteemed wins there in the Philadelphia Public League, but definitely Devin Prep just looking to break into that PCL win column. Obviously so important. Uh, their next game will be Archbishop Ryan on the 12th at home, and, and we have Brady Joyce here in the booth watching that game live as it happens. Brady, can we get a little score update going on for the... Yeah, so the Archbishop Ryan Raiders are here are leading the uh, Wood Vikings 32-29, so that will be the Tide's next opponent uh, coming up, like we said, on the 12th at home. Uh, that'll be a big game, I'm sure. Um, we'll hear all about that one uh, all over the place. LaSalle, their next games, like we said, a little road trip. You have Archbishop Carroll on Friday, Archbishop Wood on Tuesday. Um, so this is the last home game of this little three-game home stretch they have to, uh, to start off the year in league play, which is so valuable. You know, these, these home games you really can never take them for granted. Um, and it's so important to establish, you know, a home court advantage early in this one, um, you know, and, and, uh, and take care of business while you can. So right here we'll have Shane Doyle, the junior, with the inbound pass, and we will be right back in action in this one. Conlon right there. Conlon spreading it out. Back in. Reese Kraft. Kraft up against the glass and count it. Reese Kraft was on the board a lot in that first half, and he'll remain that way here in the second half. Did a great job facilitating a lot of those inside points. I'm looking to see a lot of him again. All the way here, top of the key. Passes back out. All the way into the corner. Hudak hit a couple of them from those. Back into Bear. Bear driving in. He'll miss right there from close range. Conlon here. The tied lead by five. Oh, and how about that? Good I guess he point. stepped Keep on the line. In. My goodness. Calvin Smith was driving in right there. Ref got a bird's eye view. Tapped right down at the line and, and caught him for the out of bounds play. So that'll be a turnover on the Tide, and LaSalle will possess this ball down five here. Bear passes out to Hawley. Hawley, dribble drive. Out towards the perimeter. Picks up the dribble, passes back down to Bear. Bear, the open lane and the layup. Count it. LaSalle back on the board. 37-40 is the score. Here we have Tier passes down low. It's Reese Kraft. Picked up by Conlon, however. Conlon drives in on Shields. Conlon, the spin move. How about that? A couple hesitations for him, but they'll call off the basket. And that'll be a little Sal ball. Good stretch from Bear right there. Got the points, creating his own space. Tips the ball away there, and then they end up forcing the turnover. 
Yeah, of course, so important that LaSalle gets in the driver's seat early in this third quarter here if they want any chance at winning this game. Hawley here, position in the corner. Passes out to Altamare. Altamare back to Hawley, but there will be a little miscommunication on the pass, but that's ultimately picked up by Hudak. Hudak throws it away as well. And that one's ultimately picked up by Hayes Altamare. Wow, you had a couple toss-ups right there. Down low, but LaSalle remains in possession. Hawley here guarded tightly by Kraft. Oh, Great and how pass. about that? The movement there from Luke Hudak, the Holy to Hudak connection. Two of three seniors on this team connect with a great dime and a great bucket. Kraft right there, fouled by Bear. Faced with a lot of contact going up. So our score is 39-40, LaSalle working their self back into this game. LaSalle, uh, excuse me, Holly established to be the uh, playmaker for LaSalle. A couple good assists controlling the ball, just trying to find those open lanes and make those passes. Yeah, of course, that's something Hawley does so well. But also another player that does his role so well is Reese Kraft, number 21 of Devin Prep. Obviously the lone facilitator here for the Tide and does a great job of getting to the basket and drawing fouls like that when you know it's a contest going up for it. So he'll miss that one, he'll convert on one, splitting from the charity stripe. So a two point game here, still as close as ever. Shields passes out. Hawley driving in. Hudak off the front end, but Will Bear will get the ball. Can't get up with that one. Doyle there, top of the key, passes back out the tier. Tier passing to Smith. Smith back to tier, tier pulling up from deep. Misses that one. Hudak ends up with the rebound here. He's driving quick. Sal settles himself down here. Joey Shields passes back out to Hawley. Hawley surveys the floor. He takes Kraft in. Back out to Shields. Shields driving in on himself, and then that ball will be given away. And right there, Devin Prep responds with a turnover of their own. So Sal will remain in possession right there. Some sloppy basketball to start us off. A couple loose balls that both teams have had to jump on. They're back-to-back turnovers very quickly from both teams. Yeah, that's something that's so important for this LaSalle team is ball security, holding on to the ball. A tight game like this where you've been basically in one possession the entire game, it's so important that you can't give it up on scoring opportunities. Nick Parisi in for Will Bear. He has three fouls. See how they use him, if they're gonna give him some more breaks or they're gonna let him ride it out, just ask him to be careful. Yeah, and right there, a huge three for Devin Prep. Extending this lead by a fair margin, now they lead by five. They just really have not missed from beyond the arc. LaSalle's given them a lot of space there from the perimeter, and they have just been knocked down. The cue right there off the front end, he'll miss that one. That's Kraft all the way back out into the corner. Shane Doyle misses that one. Picked up by Shields. Although Doyle couldn't get that one to fall, you made it very clear of their uh, sort of positionless offense. And that's two straight looks from three that were wide open because of how fluid they've been. And LaSalle hasn't been able to pick it up early in the second half. Yeah, and right there did a great job. Gregson McHugh got to the spot early, made himself tall. And right there, that ball is going off. Coach Joe Leitner. So funny right there, but that'll be a turnover. And some of the refs here are in disarray over the play on the floor. Devin Preps arguing the tip. LaSalle's arguing the ball was never tipped, and it's LaSalle ball. So we have a little bit of a calamity here on the court. These refs will discuss that call. Oliver, what are some of your thoughts? What, what do you see? Yeah, I just saw Devin Prep the whole bench go crazy once they called that LaSalle ball, so it is going to go back to Devin. Yeah, so right there, the review. I mean, at this level of high school sports, you don't really have the the uh, the blessing that is instant replay. Um, you know, it's it's possible, I guess, in, on some stages, but at least in a stage like this, the refs don't have access to that. So, of course, that's just a judgment call made by the field officials. Uh, and right there, we can see, obviously, that remains tied basketball, uh, and the LaSalle bench is not that happy about it. 
Wow, and how about what that a move? block. Swatted away by McHugh, but he gets to the corner again. Oh my goodness, can he even miss? Calvin Smith from deep again. Another trifecta. They're just never ending for this kid. Number four right there with limitless three-pointers. I almost wish I had Brendan Olimpo up here. We could have a three-tracker or something because he has converted from deep from afar. Yeah, and right there, Parisi answers all, on his own. Four-point game still. But the tide are rolling. Another bucket. Quick buckets, quick movement, quick attacks right now to start the second half. Oh, and Parisi right there, friendly explorer roll. But now on the rim, onto the backboard. Reese Kraft picks up the foul. Al Tamara is mad about that call, but how about that sequence right there for LaSalle? Great dive from Hawley. Found Parisi in the corner. Parisi, I mean, that's like a Kawhi Leonard bounce. We're talking about around the rim, off the top of the backboard, and then you don't really see that too often. I believe that was his first attempted three of the day, and he had a bunch of attempted threes against Prep, and he was very good, so interesting to see him slow it down here, try to go for two more as he had that mid-range layup just earlier. Yeah, but then Devin Prep's done a great job, though, of extending their lead, taking advantage of what's been given to them. Number four, Calvin Smith right there. He's been so amazing so far in this game, putting on a master class from beyond the perimeter. When Devin Preps called on him, he's answered the phone. And he's delivered on a lot of those threes. And right now, that's Hudak tightly guarded by Tier. Passes out to O'Brien. And Sal in need of a big bucket. Who will it be that scores for the Explorers? Hudak driving in. Hudak, a lot of contact right there. McHugh, he'll miss right there. From close range, he had no one around him. Chose to not use the backboard, put it up. And right there, Devin Prep does not answer on their own, and that'll be a, uh, a push from the back. So Parisi did a great job of drawing that foul. Obviously, definitely a lot of contact when he came up with that rebound, so. We remain in the gridlock, ladies and gentlemen, a five-point game, 51-46. Just over two minutes here in the third quarter. Altamari tightly guarded, a lot of men around him. Parisi from deep. Can't get the friendly explorer roll right there, but that will stay LaSalle ball. Absolutely huge, the explorers remain in possession of this game. They need every basket they can here. Down only two scores, again, five points, so it's anyone's game. LaSalle been very aggressive on the rebounds. They've had a lot of those balls that they've won on the rebound, and they've got Devin Prep to knock out. And how about that play right there from Hudak? That's a hustle play. Did a great job. He saw the space right below the basket, sprinted to it, and put that one up off the backboard. That's textbook. Oh, how about that? Great pass there. That's Doyle back out to Thier. Thier's driving in on O'Brien. Tries to put that one up. Was not even close, so the refs will call a foul on O'Brien, number three. Said he had contact going up with the ball. So two big shots loading here for Mason Thier, the junior for the Tide. They had a starting five of all juniors, and we can see why. Just pure athletes here on the court. And later in the game, they mixed in some of their seniors. Now the Tide, oh, they only have four seniors of their own. Well, Zal has three seniors on their team. So, you know, both these teams are in similar predicaments. They're both, you know, they're both young. Um, they're building for the future. They have a lot of talent that's, uh, that's loading in for these next few years. But, I mean, these players that have been on the floor have been remarkable so far. So two big shots there for Thier, and he'll convert on both. 53-48 is your score. O'Brien driving in. O'Brien got up there, oh, and wow, oh, calling oh, the charge. They argue that Conlon had already positioned himself under the basket. Ryan Ansel is unhappy with the call. The salary, maybe he went down too easy, maybe he wasn't fully set. I mean, when it comes to this stage in high school basketball, you know, the charge slash block foul is one of the hardest things to call if you're an official because it's purely based on your ramifications for what makes that foul a foul. And I guess for that official, you can see he was down there on the baseline. He had a perfect view of what was happening. And I think that ultimately, he argued that Costello was in the right possession. He didn't move. 
He didn't flail, his feet were set, and he went down with appropriate contact. So with that, a five point game here. 53-48, the tied lead. High press on Smith, not trying to let him get any space to continue to be I mean, amazing from beyond the arc. Yeah, and right there, that's a travel. You see him hesitate there as soon as he caught the ball off the pick. So right now, Hudak, the ball carrier for the South. That ball's picked away, though. Oh, and who's this down low? We have Mason Tier. Tier's going up with it, and he'll convert. That'll extend the Tide's lead here. 55-48's our score, a seven-point lead. Parisi in need of a bucket. Parisi does not answer. Lou Hudak picks it up, but that one's stolen again by Conlon. Conlon driving down. Oh, who can Conlon find down low? That's back out from Doyle. Conlon again, driving in on McHugh. Gets open, cannot put it up, but how about that? The offensive rebound and the point. And just like that, we have a nine-point game. A couple minutes ago, LaSalle had this one within three. And now a nine-point game, and that's Joey O'Brien. Second picking offensive up the foul. foul by him in the last couple minutes. You know he's not going to be happy about that. Yeah, I mean, definitely, I think, the right call on the floor. He had lowered the shoulder into the screen. Uh, it's so important that when you're setting a pick, uh, in this stage of basketball, in this stage of the game, that you stay as flat as you possibly can. You can see, drop the shoulder on that play. Just tough. We know that O'Brien is a hard-nosed player. That's just a tough call to go against the Explorers, but you just can't drop that shoulder. So Conlon passes the craft. Preps. Devin preps two big guys here at the top of the key, but that'll be some movement by Kraft down low. Conlon right there picked up a double coverage. Almost a made shot right there, full court from Hazel Tamare. I don't believe it would have counted, but would have yep. been pretty cool to see that go down. Absolutely, a make is a make, listen. But right there, I mean, how about the, the uh, run from Devin Prep to extend that, that uh, three-point lead all the way to nine here? That was a great third quarter. Devin Prep really proving what they can do on the court when it comes to making their shots and then setting up on defense. Obviously, that was a big charge that uh, that um, Ben Costello drew down low against O'Brien. So definitely doing what they can to change the tide, if you will, pun intended. Oliver, your takeaways. Yeah, it's O'Brien, we know he's a ball chaser. We saw it against the Prep. He's always trying to get down. He's always trying to win that ball. And I mentioned him being a little too aggressive against the Prep, and we're seeing something similar here. Two offensive fouls. He dropped that shoulder. The, the charge that was called on him, I don't think it was necessarily his fault. He was airborne, so nothing really he could do. Just went against him there, but don't want to see him drop the shoulder. Don't want to see him get too physical. Just try to set, just try to set those picks a little bit cleaner. Don't want to give away those fouls. Well, nevertheless, we'll see Joey O'Brien on the bench for a little bit to start this one. On the floor for LaSalle. Number five here, inbounding the ball, it's Joey Shields. Preezy looking to receive this pass, and then in the backcourt, we'll have Hawley and Hudak, two seniors, one and two. And down low, Grayson McHugh, again, paired with Shields. Preezy, off foot with the jumper. Great job of getting that one to fall. Seven point game here. We know it's basketball, it's a game of runs. Listen, Devin Prep went on a run in the third quarter, but Ken LaSalle here. They did it against Prep, wouldn't be surprised to see him do it again. Right there, Reese Kraft, it'll fall off the front end, but how about that pick up there from Zane Conlon? And that is just inexcusable if you're LaSalle. You let him go completely unmarked with the rebound. He gets the offensive rebound, puts that one up. There's no pressure down low at all. And right there, it's a flat, it's a foul on the floor. So it looks like there'll be offsetting fouls. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Down low? On both number twos. That's what it looks like. So I guess it was with that tangle up with Hudak and, and Thier. Yeah, Smith stumbled uh, as he tried to get back on defense, and I guess he got tangled up with Hudak, giving them both technical fouls. 
personal fouls. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, so. Like we saw right there, offsetting fouls. It'll be one apiece on the team. Yep, so Mason Thier and Luke Rudolph. There's that little tangle up right there in midcourt. But Parisi from deep. Oh, how about that? Nick Parisi from way downtown. Got bodies on the floor. Luke Hudock fell down. And the cue was tightly guarding Kraft. Kraft is picked up right there with the travel. The cue been impressive, impressive on both sides of the court. Been very good down low just because of his size and stature, getting those rebounds, getting those put back points. Yeah. Very good on defense with a couple blocks. And I guess the call was that Kraft had that pivot foot moving, something you just can't do. Right there, Hawley, he planted that down when he had pivoted there. Right there, Parisi there, trying to get on top of that one. Ooh, foul on the floor. A lot of contact there on hard wood. The two players slow to get up are Calvin Smith and Nick Parisi. Praying that they're okay. Calvin Smith has had one heck of a game. Done a great job so far in this one. Parisi reaching for the back of his head. Maybe he took an arm. He seems to be okay. Yeah, and just really unfortunate to see Calvin Smith there, got a little bit dinged up on that play. Like we said, it's hard wood these guys are falling on, so you know, not exactly a, a soft landing. Uh, checking in for him will be Ben Costello, the senior. So the tie now opting for a bit of a taller lineup here. It'll be Conlin on Shields and Costello on McHugh. So they're going a little bit more matchup base, which is so important here with uh, about six minutes here, six and a half minutes to go. The Sal in need of a big bucket. It's a six-point game. They have to get a score. Who's going to be the guy to answer the call? Hudox had a great game. So is Shields. Shields driving in, but he's picked up double coverage. A lot of contact. It'll stay the Sal ball. The last couple plays, Nick Carizzi been trying to control the ball through the middle like Liam Hawley was doing earlier. But Devin Prep getting the hand on the ball, forcing him to knock it loose and do a sort of just chuck pass. And maybe he'll be a little bit more hesitant to try to make those runs through the middle with the ball. So Parisi right here, dribbling and driving when it's picked off. Conlin down to Kraft, Kraft going up. And Kraft will put it in, how about that? Euro stepping in the paint. Get a passport and a visa with that one. Absolutely incredible. And the Tide are up right now, eight points. LaSalle needs quick baskets here with six minutes to go. Not a lot of time left, Parisi from deep, and he'll convert. How about that? Nick Parisi, booms going off in the gym. The LaSalle students are amped up right there. You can hear a lot of that. Boom, boom. Parisi answered when LaSalle needed him. We have a five point game. That's absolutely huge. Just doing what he does best out here on the court. He's proven that so far this year. A lot of big shots from all over the place. When you need him to drive, he'll drive. When you need him to make from afar, he'll make them. He hasn't uh, given up a foul in the second half. He got three in the first, so he's being a little bit more cautious on defense. Absolutely right there, but I mean, he pulled up well off from the, the high school three-point line. That could obviously very well be a, uh, a professional made three, without a doubt. So O'Brien will check back into the game here for the Explorers. As will Hayes out tomorrow. So Shields and Hudak coming off here. Grayson McHugh stays down low. They need that size in the paint. Thier picked up. Parisi. Thier dribble drive. Oh my goodness. How about the composure getting that ball up there? But that'll remain Devin Prep ball. The rebound there from Conlon was incredible. Thier misses that shot. And Parisi's sure to get both hands on that one. Coming down with it. So 5.30 remain. Grayson McHugh down low. Grayson McHugh puts that one up. And just like that, a three-point game. LaSalle is back in it. Good look from Parisi to find McHugh down low. And Kraft passing it down low. That's a miss from very close right there. Huge a miss, miss from Shane Doyle. O'Brien now with the ball. Altamare coming in. He'll drive past the baseline. Parisi pulling up. Hit in the face. Doesn't matter. Count it. LaSalle, a tie game. 61-61 with five minutes remaining. Can you believe it? A minute and a half it took them to get nine points to a tie. 
I mean, that's what we said at the start of the quarter. Basketball is a game of runs right there, and LaSalle proved it, went on a little run of their own, and that right there was a great sequence from the LaSalle College High School Explorers. Tie ball game, 61 apiece, a little bit under five minutes. How about that? When you needed them to answer, they did. And they called on Paris, they called on all their guys. Great shots from deep, did a great job of stretching the floor, passing the ball when they needed to. I mean, that right there is how you play basketball, Oliver. Yeah, they have to appreciate the work from McHugh in his first game back. Some big plays there. Parisi found him down low, and he's just such a big body. You just can't defend that once he has that ball that close. So if they can keep making those looks, keep making those really nice passes to him down low, they can just get those points easily and quickly. Absolutely. I mean, McHugh is a guy that you just can't have in, in uh, an open space. He's too big. You know, how often do you see a guy who's 6'8 playing high school basketball um, you know, that's a size you see a lot of Division I players have in the front court. So, just so important that LaSalle continues to utilize him uh, in every way they can. Uh, because, you know, players like him are, are, are cherished, you know, for their size, their skill, their IQ. And right there, did a great job. Like you saw, like you said, got to the spot, posted up, made the arms tall, put that one up. It was like nothing for him. So, it'll be very important to see how LaSalle utilizes all their players they have here with under five minutes to go what looks like to be a gridlock of a game. Both teams obviously fighting for their first PCL win, so the stakes are high. And in this league, every game means something for seeding. So how about that move right there? Conlon off the glass, couldn't fall. It's a foul on the floor, though. Couple missed layups down low from Devin. Yeah, so important you convert on those from close range. So right now, LaSalle subbing in. Will Bear taking out Joey O'Brien. So Will Bear will pick up Reese Kraft there. Oh, how about that? Great reflex there from Hudock on the baseline. As Doyle with the inbound play. Finding Conlon. Conlon on McHugh. How about this matchup for, for size? Tightly got brought him on the cue though. Kraft with the rebound, pass back on to Doyle. Doyle off the front end, will not convert. Oh, what a play right there. Conlon putting that one up. His back was to the basket, got the offensive rebound, put that one up. Three Ridiculous. offensive rebounds in one possession. LaSalle cannot let that happen. Yeah, absolutely. This is huge here, you're down a score. A little bit over four minutes. Who's gonna answer the phone? Oh my goodness, Hayes Altamare, a three of his own. Can you believe it? Well, Sal is in the lead, 64-63. Back and forth goes this game. Oh, you thought about pulling up. Calvin Smith, he's tightly guarded now. Conlin thinks about pulling up. He'll drive in, passes back out. Calvin Smith from far. Oh my goodness. Smith and Parisi pulling up from everywhere on the court. I mean, we are witnessing a masterclass here from Calvin Smith has not missed from the perimeter. I've never seen something like this, never. I mean, the guy is white hot, and that's an understatement. Hawley, he can't convert, front end of the rim. Calvin Smith picks up the rebound. LaSalle looks for the travel call, can't find it. Passes down to Doyle, Doyle down to Kraft. Kraft back out, Calvin Smith. Conlon here, debated the three, he drives in though. A little bit of mismatch on Hawley. Oh, and you just can't have that happen. You really wanted McHugh there to switch back over and see if he could pick up Conlon. It's just such a shame to have Hawley guarding someone like Conlon deep in the paint like that. You're gonna get caught up with a foul. Crafton making a lot of runs across the face of the basket when they're trying to make those quick motions. And he has to get picked up, they have to run back to him because again, he's just gonna sit out here and he's gonna have a ton of space to make that run. And if they can find it to him, then he can get quick points. But they also get him the ball and then he has time to set up a play. Yes, yeah, so that's a big miss right there from Conlon. The junior front court phenom here for the Tide. So it's still a one possession game regardless. He'll make the second, he'll split it from the line. 67 64 is our score. Three minutes. These are the moments you live for as a high school athlete. Who's going to be the guy for LaSalle? It's a game of runs, like we said. Can LaSalle withstand this run from Devin Prep? I don't know, it looks like Mason Thiel had the ball stolen from him. Hawley right there, using his space. 
and he'll be fouled there at about mid-court. That's number five, Shane Doyle, fouling him with Hawley trying to run down in transition. It's a smart foul. The foul on the floor, he's not shooting. Uh, Devin Prep has three team fouls now going against them, so you're still safe in terms of the bonus. And did a great job right there of stopping someone like Hawley from getting to the basket, which he does so well. I believe that was four times that Nick Parisi has had the ball stolen from him when he's trying to drive through the paint. See if he changes that. See if he takes a little bit uh, more, more time on the approach, find some passes as he's on the ball right here. So Altamari there going offset of McHugh's Good screen. Pass. Oh, kickball. I guess it's a, they're pointing to 25 on the kick. So I guess Conlon there will pick up the kick, like you said. That should be a baseline play for LaSalle. They're looking for the play to call here. Altamari will be the inbound man. Quick ball out to McHugh. Altamari, hand in the face. It's off. That doesn't count. Off the top right there. That wire, that. The little cable. Yeah, that got lets, in the way. Let's the, the net retract up. Yeah. Nine play. Yeah, and that happens a lot here from this gym. It's not the biggest gym that we have, so definitely tough right there. It was off the, the back end of the rim, went straight up off that cable, like you said, and then. Wow, and a rare miss right there from Calvin Smith. LaSalle will definitely use that one to their advantage here. They're down three, it's one score. Can they find someone to pull it off? Luke Hudock there off the front end again. Both teams cooling off from three in this past couple minutes. LaSalle has two minutes to find the comeback. It's definitely important LaSalle doesn't rush. And right there, how about that? Conlon picking up the foul. They said he leaned in with the elbow. They called it as a, as a personal foul against Conlon right there. You see he leaned in. Devin Prep's not happy about it. Conlon's not happy about it. Joey O'Brien thinks it's the right call. However, he'll have a seat on the bench now. Yeah, O'Brien in foul trouble. Yeah. Maybe they get him back in for the last minute. I wouldn't be surprised to see him stay out for the rest of the game. Yeah, what's most important right now is a Sal gets a three, or any point for that matter. Parisi, they're just, they just need him to get a three off. Oh my goodness, Nick Parisi, how do you do from deep? The perimeter man gets it done again. Oh my goodness, what a play there from Reese Kraft. As great as that three was from Parisi, I really thought I saw contact. No yeah. call though. Yeah, no call on the contact. Could have been an old fashioned four point play. A and lot again. of contact on that play again. No whistles to be found. So a 67 69 game here. A little bit over one minute. McHugh! Oh, How about my the goodness. big man! McHugh, the big fella, pulls it up from deep and he converts. 70 69 is your score. A little bit over one minute to go here in the fourth quarter. And I mean, there is just absolute bedlam here from LaSalle College High School. We got six, eight big men making threes from deep. I mean, this right here is what you look for in the PCL, a back and forth game. The energy is unmatched. And you got guys like Grayson McHugh pulling up from deep saying, fine, I'll do it myself. Drains that one, no doubt about it. So a 70-69 game here, about a little bit over one minute in the fourth. And like we said before in this one, both these teams playing with what is really a lot on the line. To get that first PCL win would, would jump both these teams up exponentially on the standings board where teams like Roman Catholic and Archbishop Woods sit atop. Every game in this league means a lot for seeding. And so it's just so important that both these teams can find a way to break into that win column. So these teams are fighting hard. That's for every sport as well. Overall, the PCL is a very competitive league. So getting that first win off is, in my opinion, the most important one to establish that you're a team that can win games, to establish a team that you need to really prepare for and be ready to face their best. So we'll sell up one point right now. Devin Prep, about a minute to go left in this one. And that's a big turnover. Well, not even a turnover, that's tipped away. The LaSalle student section argues the call. The LaSalle bench is arguing the call, but the refs will continue with the call. That's a tip ball, and it'll remain in the Tide's possession. So inbounding this right now is Shane Doyle. 
LaSalle tightly guarding the tide right now, but gets Conlon down low on Altamare. They thought they saw the carry. Passes back out to Doyle. Doyle, all the way out to Conlon. Tier. Again, no shot clock. All they need is one bucket to take the lead. Who's it gonna be? Oh, and that's Calvin Smith. He can't let him get hot from the arc. Conlon right there, guarded by Hawley. The mismatch again. Shane Doyle, guarded by O'Brien. Doyle coming in. LaSalle also arguing no calls on the floor. Hawley tightly guarding Thier. Thier trying to go up. Thier, can he make it? Off the back end of the rim. That's picked up by Conlon. An offensive rebound, and that ball will stay with the tide. Wow. So right there, another missed rebound chance from the Explorers. 24.3 on the clock. Conlon with the ball to Doyle. To Tier. Oh my Good goodness, pass. right there, Reese Kraft, he's wide open, and the clock is running. 71-70 is our score. We don't have any indication of timeouts. There's 11 seconds left. LaSalle needs a basket, and that one's picked off. Reese Kraft with the ball, and it'll stay with the tide. 71-70 is our score now. Reese Kraft was down low, wide open. A couple offensive rebounds allowed him to be open and allowed Devin Prep to have the ball. Right there, he put that one up. No trouble for him. Yeah, I mentioned it earlier. LaSalle Ridiculous. has to cut out those offensive rebounds, and it looks like it's going to haunt him here today. Yeah, absolutely ridiculous right there. Now, the game is not over by any means. We have 7.5 seconds left on the clock. LaSalle will most likely have to foul. Hope they miss their shots and then fire off a quick shot and, and just pray and hope that that one will go in. But right there, I mean, we just said it. Rebounding right there is what can make or break a team on the high school level. And LaSalle just failed to get those defensive rebounds. It created a lot of scoring opportunities on the flip side for the Tide. That's been happening all game long. It's not just an issue at this stage in the game. It's been happening since the first quarter. And I mean, really, when it mattered most, the Tide wound up with the ball. So we have around seven and a half seconds left. Yeah, you mentioned how this clock. game isn't over. I mean, with the way both teams have been shooting from three, yeah. it's definitely not. I mean, look at the score line, 71-70. Yeah. to 70. You can never rule anything out here. So 7.4 seconds on the clock. LaSalle finds themselves in another tight game here. Again, Friday night it was a tough game against St. Joe's Prep. They lost by three in that one. So what will it be here? 7.4 seconds. Conlon fouled hard. Now it's important that Conlon got the ball. LaSalle fans could find some benefit in that. Conlon missed a couple of free throws in this second half already. But I guess that since they're not in the bonus yet, it will not send him to the line. So it'll still be a foul on the floor. They're running 6.2 seconds off the game clock. Devin Prep figuring out what play to run. And I guess it's a personal foul on Nick Parisi. He is absolutely confused at that call. Maybe there was some contact there on the play before. I guess that'll be a timeout called from LaSalle. Confusing couple seconds right yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely. I, I personally, I mean, of course, with all due respect to the refs, they do a great job. They've been doing a great job in this game where there's been a lot of contact. But on that play, I don't think there was enough contact to call it against Parisi. That's just my take. Of course, now, the refs obviously have a great view. They have a bird's eye view, unlike us. So, of course, they saw that play happen whilst it was occurring. But, you know, from our vantage point, I didn't see enough contact from Parisi to have that one go. Yeah, now Parisi, one foul to give. Yeah. Makes it that much bigger of a call. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So Parisi's definitely in trouble. Definitely in trouble. Both teams this quarter, four person or four team fouls. I'm sorry, four team fouls piece. So Sal, it's important they get their hands up here. 6.2 seconds on the clock. Fourth quarter. The tie lead by Final one. Lane. And right there, no one is around at all. So I'm the bucket there from Reese Kraft was wide open in I'm the paint. I'm not sure why he took the shot. 
he, he could have ticked some. If you held the ball, he could end the game. The game is over. There's not a player anywhere nearby. If you hold the ball, the game is over. Absolutely, Oliver. That's a great point. So if he held on to that ball, that's ball game. LaSalle still has a chance. They still have a chance to sink a three and send this one to overtime. Absolutely. So LaSalle's last time out will be burned here. 1.5 seconds on the clock. Ooh, they bumped it up to 2.1. Oh, wow. So I guess I guess the refs had a different clock, different time situation of mine. Asked for the change here. And now head coach Ryan Ansel drawing up the play. The first year head coach. He's coached this LaSalle team already through a lot of tough games. A lot of games that have gone down to the wire. And, you know, one really hasn't gone the LaSalle's way just yet. So they're looking to see if they can come from behind here. They're down a score, down three points. At the end of, I believe it was the third quarter, Hayes Altamari took one that I don't believe it would have counted if it went, but it almost went down. Yeah. So do they look for him again now that he has a little bit more time to get it off? Maybe. Yeah, well, that, that clock will not start if LaSalle chooses to inbound with rolling the ball up. Oh, Hayes is going to It looks like he'll be the it. inbound man. So LaSalle, it's so important they get one off real quick. So we'll see what they draw up here. 2.1 seconds on the clock. 73-70 is the score, the tied lead. Hal Tamari, a touchdown pass. Oh, no. It's off one of the speakers, off the ceiling. And, and is that going to be Devin Prep basketball? Wow. And Hudak oh was my goodness. wide open as oh well. Oh my goodness. So a turnover there on Altamare off the sound system. Not even the ceiling, Oliver. The sound system. And that'll be a turnover on LaSalle. That's Devin Prep basketball. And yeah, the speaker's still shaking up there. Yeah, and that, wow. So I guess that'll be a foul on the floor. It will send LaSalle into the bonus five home fouls. One of these goes down, the game is all but over. Miss so Conlon will miss the first. Again, like we said before, Conlon's a guy that you do want as well, at the line as a LaSalle Explorer. Time for maybe he hasn't made every free throw. one step and to chuck it up with 1.1 to go, and he makes it. It actually would have been smarter to miss that one and keep the clock running, but Parisi there will set one off, and he'll miss. And that'll be the ball game. 74-70 is your score. The tide of Devin Prep beat the Explorers up LaSalle. LaSalle moves to 5-7 and seven on the year, 0-3 in PCL play as they end this home stretch. You'll look to find us on Bob Long Sports Live on Friday night against Archbishop Carroll High School at Archbishop Carroll High School. 6 p.m. It'll be a great Friday night basketball night in the PCL and on Bob Long Sports as we head to Radnor, Pennsylvania. Of course, best of luck to Jason Fisher and the rest of the Devon Prep Tide this year as they'll go on to take Archbishop Ryan on the 12th at home. Looking forward to seeing that result. And on behalf of Bob Long Sports, my name is Danny Rovey, our color commentator for today, Oliver Gomez. Thank you for all that you do. And of course, our guy on camera, Brady Joyce. Thank you for everything as always. Ladies and gentlemen, have a great night.